Hello and welcome back to Polytoots. Uh, in today's lesson we're going to be doing just a, just a little quick tip actually, so it's not actually a lesson at all, I lied about that, sorry. Um, but I was just thinking, um, especially because I, I've done a height blended vertex painting shader tutorial before and I'm not making this just to plug that honestly, but I was thinking about uh, a lot of the things that I do in my job that I'm not actually sort of teaching here. Um, and this is just a, uh, a three channel shader here. So it's just, you know, it's kind of like three materials, but already you see this texture list just, you know, it's insane. And this could even be even more, you know, I could have a lot more materials to, uh, to blend here. So, you know, it gets kind of out of control pretty quickly. Um, and if you're using like uh, the HD render pipeline from Unity or e e even if you're not actually, but, um, one thing that you may have seen, uh, let's just actually grab this. If I just create, um, say, a Unity material, um, and I won't use the HDRP, so we'll just actually just go to standard. It won't work because I'm using HDRP. Now, obviously, we're used to things like the um, albedo containing the transparency, and it says here, so the transparency would be in the alpha. Uh, and then you have the same thing for your metallic, so your um, smoothness map would be in in your alpha. Um, so let me just get rid of this. And they take it a bit further with the um, HDR uh, pipeline. Um, and so they have this, you know, this mask map, which has your metallic AO detail and smoothness. Um, and so I thought it would actually be uh, maybe a good opportunity to kind of talk about why you should think about making your own because there's there's a lot of materials uh, or t textures that you might want to use and things can get out of, out, of, out of hand pretty fast, especially if you're doing any kind of vertex painting and just, just using like an absolute boatload of textures. So let's just open the scene here. I have uh, some very, well, a very uh, simple example. So this is obviously just like one material. So it's just, it's, it's all the maps that you would need to do all of this. Um, Although it's worth noting that although I have a height, I'm not actually e using it here, but you know, you might have a use for your height. Um, but anyway, yeah, so it's, this is just one material. You've got your albedo, your normals, emission, I mean, occlusion, metal, smoothness, alpha. Um, and obviously to begin with, you think, well, you could condense the alpha into the albedo, um, smoothness into your roughness. Uh, but this, this quick tip is just about like, why not, why not push it a bit further? Uh, so I have this example over on the right here. So this is just three textures. There's an albedo, a normal, and then this is everything else, um, sort of. I have um, I have an alpha in my albedo, and I'm also using the alpha of the normal channel. Um, and then there's the mask, which is just all of the others. And so uh, we just have a quick look at what these textures contain over here in uh, Photoshop. So I have my albedo with an alpha, pretty standard uh, normal map, and in its alpha channel, I'm using the height map, um, which is a good habit. I think um, it's not uncommon for the alpha channel of a normal map to contain the height map info. Like that's pretty, that's pretty safe. So then here's the, the actual sort of like, you know, the, uh, if you could see me doing air quotes, I would be saying mask texture right now with the, uh, with the quotes on that. Um, and so this has my metalness, my roughness, my emission and my ambient occlusion, uh, kind of all in one. And the reason that my albedo and my normal map only have uh, like two extra textures is because these are actually RGB textures. Like we need the red and the green and the blue channel in order to display the actual, uh, you know, the correct texture. So you can't, unfortunately, just go and like cram all of these other channels here, the RGB in your albedo with any other kind of grayscale image that you want because yeah, it, it won't work. But my use of the word grayscale there was uh, pretty important in that you kind of want to reserve this for grayscale textures only. I mean, you'll see here, it, as these all get combined into the RGB, it will have a color, but this is basically sort of redundant information for you. The thing that matters the most is um, everything will kind of be converted over to grayscale. So there's your red and your green and your blue channel and, you know, obviously your alpha. Now, um, I'm not going to show you, you know, how to put these into the um, RGB and A channels. Uh, I'm, I'm sure if you have Photoshop, you could, you could work that out. There are also some, um, you know, some automatic t texture packing tools that you can get. I haven't used any of them, so unfortunately, I, I won't be, 
recommending any, but um, I think it is just as simple as like a like an asset store thing, uh, and you just select which of your textures will go in the RGB and A slot. So if you're wondering kind of how to even do that without something like Photoshop, I'm pretty sure there are tools available. So hopping back into Unity for a second, um, it makes life not only easier for actually just sort of inputting the textures like after you've built the shader, um, but it also kind of helps when you're making a shader. So if we look at the first one here, so the example on the left, which just uses all of the maps, uh, we have, you know, all of our properties and we have all of the t texture duties. And again, like I said, I wasn't actually using the height, but you know, it's, your, it's a classic sort of a grayscale image. So that's why it's there. Uh, yeah. And I do just have just a little, um, animation happening for the emissive. This obviously it's not important. I just have, have to put it there to show you that I'm using an emissive mask. So yeah, so you have this, this is the normal one. This is kind of what you would build if you were making use of uh, each of these t textures like individually, you know, obviously your shader probably wouldn't be this simple. Like you wouldn't just have texture 2Ds, but um, either way, it's just an example. Uh, so let's close that one down and we'll open up the, the packed one. Uh, and so yeah, you see here, it's just, it's a lot simpler. So it's just, it's quicker to make the actual shader that you want. Um, and then after you've created it, uh, you or whoever else is working like within a project with you, uh, it's going to be so much easier for them to just pr propagate uh, things correctly, which kind of streamlines me into the next bit, which is uh, naming convention. Um, so I have just an example here that I've used in the past. It's not the best, but um, I will just have like an underscore, like lowercase a. Uh, in fact, actually, I've done that wrong. I think I do uppercase to be the channel and then lowercase for the map. So alpha, alpha in this example. And then this one would be your alpha height. Uh, and then, of course, this one, red channel, metallic, green roughness, blue emission, alpha equals AO. You know, I'm not saying you have to stick with this naming convention, but uh, it just kind of helps. Also, I suppose um, you probably want to include it in the shader itself. Yeah, that would make sense. I haven't done that, but you know, whatever. And another thing to kind of mention is uh, if we look at sort of all of these textures that we have, so there's um, eight that we were using before sort of all split out. Um, this, I think, you know, you're looking at uh, 2.7 megabytes, 5.3, 2.7. I think uh, in total, because we've got 2.7, 2.7, so seven 2.7s and a 5.3 which uh, if I just do some quick editing now to grab a calculator and to do the math so that you think I'm smart, but actually I'm not, that would equal about uh, 24.2 megabytes. Uh, so if we come down and we have a look at uh, the three that we've actually packed, we have, you know, a 5.3, a 5.3, and the last one probably still, yeah, a 5.3. So you're looking at 15.9 uh, megabytes for that. We can round it up. We can say that there's 16 megabytes being used here, uh, which is a saving of something like 8.3, maybe, I think, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, but also, while I'm here mentioning that, uh, you probably should be using crunch compression. Um, this has nothing to do with the tutorial, but if we just actually, let me, uh, see what, so we knew that these were uh, 5.3 or something like that. So if I just enable that and apply. Now, for the most part, Crunch compression is pretty amazing, but if you do find you're getting some weird artifacts, just mess with the the, uh, the quality. Um, so now we're looking at you know 1.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.8 megabytes. That is that is insane. Like if you're not using cr crunch compression, you you need to be. It's uh, it's beautiful. So yeah, that's kind of it for uh, all of I guess the um, the good sides. Um, I haven't really talked too much about the examples. Vertex painting being like a great sort of uh, place where you may want to ad adopt this kind of pipeline. I believe uh, like the original Left 4 Dead, I think they were using some of the mask stuff e e either for uh, clothing that got wet or perhaps a spread of decals. Um, don't quote me on that. Uh, I probably shouldn't have even mentioned it at all. Um, but yeah, so we talked about some of the good things like why you might want to kind of go down this route. Um, but of course, one major flaw it has is if you only have, you know, your uh, albedo with an alpha, if you only have your 
normal with the height in the alpha and then you have this sort of this special mask texture that you created it's not really going to be compatible with much else that you use like if you're using some shader from somewhere else or even like the unity standard ones or the hdrp like whichever way you look at it it, it is it is uh oh spaghetti -o all over the place because um you you're basically putting yourself in a corner where you kind of have to use like your own custom shaders for these uh t textures that you're p packing these other textures into um so that's something to keep in mind but you know if you're super organized and you have everything planned out you know what will exist where then you know i would say to go for it um the savings uh are often pretty good uh and the uh the time that it takes to sort of create and to propagate is also pretty good um so yeah that's um that's kind of it basically um i don't know i mean it's probably pretty obvious just from this screenshot but of course um so this is my mask uh texture ran through a uh, sample texture 2d and this isn't a shader forge specific thing like at all um also i just realized i said shader forge shader graph um you can use the any um node-based shader editor that you want um yeah so this isn't this isn't a shader graph specific thing um but yeah as as as, as you can see i'm basically just splitting out you know the r g b and the a into their own places because this is you know it's the equivalent of four textures in one we've just crammed all that information into different channels um so yeah i'm expecting that uh, a lot of people watching this probably you know they're already aware of a workflow like this but um i was just mulling it over with the um with the vertex painting tutorial that i had done this one um because obviously you know i'm teaching these things because uh it's sort of trying to introduce ways that you could be working in your actual projects and um, ultimately i wouldn't use this in a game that i was working on like i would swap it over to compacting or rather combining textures into other textures in an example like this um so yeah that's all it is just a just a quick little tip and so that's pretty much i think all i have to say about it i think although what always happens is the moment i stop recording i just realize that there's 20 things that i forgot to mention but you know it is what it is so yeah thank you for watching but that does completely wrap it up so i will see you in the next one